President Joe Biden gave a speech on the one year anniversary of the Capitol riots. And while Biden usually takes a more conciliatory tone with Republican lawmakers, that wasn't the case in his speech today. He not only called out Donald Trump, not by name, but it was very clear he was talking about Trump. He also gave a pretty vivid image of who the Capitol rioters were and what their intentions were. And Donald Trump and the rest of the conservatives are not too happy or pleased about it. Now, before we get to Donald Trump's statement, his fuming statement in response to Joe Biden, why don't we give you a little snippet of what Biden had to say? He's not just a former president, he's a defeated former president. Defeated by a margin of over 7 million of your votes. Now, Donald Trump, of course, did not like that. And I personally enjoy when his feelings get hurt and when he puts out these unhinged statements. They don't get as much play these days because they're not on Twitter where he's banned. But here's what he had to say in response to Biden. Biden used my name today to try to further divide America. Let's just pause, or I already need to pause. A, Biden didn't actually use Trump's name at all, but it was clear who he was talking about. So I mean, I guess that doesn't matter that much, but fair enough, exactly. But secondly, Donald Trump doesn't ever get to criticize anyone for dividing the country. Dividing the country is his bread and butter. Dividing the country is what he capitalized on in the lead up to the 2016 election. It is what he leaned into during his one and only term as President of the United States. Division is what he eats for dinner, he loves it. So to say that Biden is dividing the country is ridiculous, especially when it's coming from Donald Trump. Now, I have a ton of criticism for Biden in a million other ways, but being divisive or dividing the country, I think is crazy, especially when he's gone out of his way to unite with Republicans, especially when he has decoupled the massive infrastructure bill to separate out the public infrastructure, or the, I'm sorry, the physical infrastructure from the social spending, just so he can get Republicans to sign on to the physical infrastructure bill. There's no way I'm ever gonna buy from someone like Donald Trump that Biden is the divisive one. If anything, Biden isn't divisive enough. He's not harsh enough when it comes to the nefarious figures in the Republican Party. But let me continue. The political theater is all just a distraction for the fact that Biden has completely and totally failed. That statement I don't have as much of an issue with, I'm not gonna lie. So let's just put that aside. John, before I get to the rest of the yeah. statement, any thoughts? I, look, I, I think there's quite a bit of failure that we can identify, that we have identified many times on the show. I, I don't think that's why he's making the statement to link it together is nonsensical. But you know, Donald Trump is implicated in this, so he has to come up with some sort of defense. Um, talking about it being divisive on the anniversary of a riot you instigated, and right. reporting reporting today says you watched with glee. So happy that you rewound the riot and watched it again. I don't know, I feel like you maybe get to share in the division. No, Biden, look, Biden is a lot of things, many of them bad, but particularly divisive. No, no, we we could point out some of the ways that he's undercut his own campaign promises. I would argue there's a case to be made that you know uh, not helping people out with student loan debt, you know, requiring them to to start repaying in the middle of a, uh, a pandemic. Th- those are things that could arguably be socially divisive, but no, that's that's hardly one of the things he's most guilty of. Trump continues uh, writing. Why is it that the unselect, like the unselect committee nickname is so, it's so childish, but whatever. Why is it that the unselect committee of totally partisan political hacks whose judgment has long ago been made, not discussing the rigged presidential election of 2020, it's because they don't have the answers or the justifications for what happened. They got away with something and it is leading to our country's destruction. Now, what's leading to the country's destruction is the fact that this man, lost more than 60 court battles challenging the results of the 2020 election and continues to perpetuate this lie that the election was stolen from him. He lost, but he continues to lie to the American people. And that is not only dividing the country, 
That is leading to political violence. In fact, in poll after poll, Republicans who respond, a significant portion of them argue that, yeah, we might need to resort to political violence to take the country back. And to be sure, considering January 6th, they've already done it. And he just yeah. continues to lie, he can't help himself. So that's Donald Trump, Trump is gonna Trump, this is what he does. Yep. But now let's go to some of the other conservatives, some of the other GOP lawmakers who have weighed in. We've got Lindsey Graham, who is a complete and utter clown. He tweets, what brazen politi politi I can't say this word, I always struggle with it. He accuses Biden of politicizing January 6th. Maybe because January 6th was incredibly political. It was an attempt to overturn the results of our democratic process. It's yeah. inherently political. So accusing Biden of politicizing something that's political is incredibly stupid. But Lindsey Graham isn't the only one who did this. He continues to write in his tweet, I wonder if the Taliban who now rule Afghanistan with Al Qaeda elements present, contrary to the pre contrary to President Biden's belief, are allowing this speech to be carried. I don't I that <laughs> so you, you, did you see you know when the Virginia um, when people couldn't drive because uh, the snow and there's the huge backup and someone had tried to like tie it to BLM like that and the Lindsey Graham speech are like inevitably what Twitter has to become like in the absence of actual cleverness just tie two things together just reference another thing and that's supposed to stand in for cleverness and so he thinks he's doing that he's not it's engaging even worse. it's What's even that? worse. It's even worse because Lindsey Graham is a massive war hawk. Like he's mm -hmm. very hawkish on foreign policy, and so he's like, I don't know, like uh, how uh, how can I uh, d have some uh, pro defense spending, uh, yeah. pro military industrial complex like baked into this? So he puts yeah. out some lie about Al Qaeda working with uh, the Taliban. They're like, I don't know. I would like to know why is he politicizing the Taliban taking over Afghanistan? We can all play this game. Don't totally. politicize anything. Don't talk about the totally. election in a political way. He's talking about them politicizing a coup. <laughs> you get to politicize a coup, it's pretty political. What's also amazing is Lindsey Graham himself on January 6th made statements that were very similar to what Biden said in his speech. Mm -hmm. Was he politicizing things? Mm -hmm. I don't know, let's, uh, let's refresh our memories. It is over, it is over. The final thing, Joe Biden, I've traveled the world with Joe. I hoped he lost, I prayed he would lose, he won. He's the legitimate president of the United States. I cannot convince people, certain groups, by my words, but I will tell you by my actions, that maybe I, among any, above all others in this body, need to say this, Joe Biden, and Kamala Harris are lawfully elected and will become the president and the vice president of the United States on January the 20th. Brazen politicizing, brazen. Yeah. No, it, it, like that, I'm, great, I'm very glad that you brought that up. Um, and look, he said that he was done with Trump after January 6th. That's obviously not true. Um, it's been political. The only question is in what direction does Lindsey Graham think his politics should go? In the immediate aftermath of the insurrection, I think he somewhat reasonably thought, "Oh well, we've clearly crossed a line. This isn't gonna work. It's why he denounced it. It's why Fox News hosts were trying to stop Trump in the middle of it. Kevin McCarthy was against him. But they had, I guess, underestimated the depravity of their base. And so within a month or two, you know, he was headed down to play golf with Trump. I'll remind you, by the way, because I'm very glad that you brought up that, that speech. Just two days later, remember, he was mobbed at an airport by a mm. pro-Trump crowd chanting at him. Because how dare you not stand with your president? He was reminded just two days after the insurrection how radical this movement had become. But he has reconciled himself to that since then. And he is once again just you know, a good loyal uh, you know, cog in the machine. Well, he's a coward. I think uh, that moment in the airport probably shook him. And yeah. so now he's going after Biden for saying the exact same thing that he said on the night of January 6th following the riots. I want to now go to Fox News host Dana Perino, 
who also seems to have a problem with a politician using a speech to talk about po politics. So let's watch. The president, though, his remarks were more um, pointed. Um, and quite uh, political, I would say, uh, divisive in many ways. Uh, this is how he sees it, Brett. The other thing is, is that Brett, we're talking about just choices and uh, tones that you can make when you are a president of the United States. And if your instinct is to escalate rather than de-escalate um, tension and division, then that's one way to go about it. And in some ways to me, what I thought today is the president just missed an opportunity to talk about what you just said, which is that our founding fathers were brilliant. They put together a constitution that is not perfect, but it is held together. And you could have shown gratitude to those lawmakers who came back to the chamber after being quite shaken, I'm sure, and their staffs shaken up. They come back, they do the right thing, and Joe Biden is inaugurated and he is president. And we as a country have moved on. We've got a lot of challenges that we're dealing with, but you could have talked about the strength of our system. John, as a connoisseur of the devil's lettuce, sometimes my memory is a little fuzzy. So I just wanted to be reminded of what Donald Trump was up to as the Capitol riot was taking place. Because if I remember correctly, Donald Trump had to be urged to take action to stop the violence, but it took him a while. Why was that? What was he up to? Uh, well, apparently, according to you know the new reporting, he was watching it and giggling, excited that they're coming to fight for me. He was having fun. He was presumably avoiding phone calls with you know all of his advisors because virtually all of them apparently were texting him to stop this. He was approached twice by his own daughter to stop it, but he was enjoying it. And they finally got him to start to record a video. It took forever to put it out because he refused to say anything sane or rational during it. And then eventually the video did come out, we saw it, it was madness. It was him talking about how they're very special people and he loves them very much. So mm. that's what he was doing. But Dana Perino, why, why are we listening? To Dana Perino was talking about people politicizing things. She was the press secretary under George W. Bush. It's such a, like it's, you know, like, um, as you're growing up, you learn about like imposter syndrome and all that. And when, you, but the, sort of the opposite, when you're kids, you think that adults understand everything. They've gotten to their positions because they're capable and competent and all that. And then you grow up and you realize it's not really the case. It is so 100% the same for the news. Dana Prino has been doing this for literally years. She's a professional insofar as anyone in news is. And she just throws out that someone's politicizing something. It's the laziest thing. It's like the attacks against Emma Watson. Anytime somebody criticizes Israeli government policy, it's anti-Semitic. It's just you just throw it out there. It means nothing. It doesn't mean anything to you to make it. And it just makes this whole thing, this attempt to have a discourse about the future of our country, even more pathetic and unbearable on a daily basis. Well, we've got one more video that I want to just quickly get to because the <sighs> I, worst elements of the Republican Party have been floating this conspiracy theory that, you know, it wasn't really MAGA chuds doing the riots. It was actually the FBI. And so Matt Gates and Marjorie Green held a press conference to continue spreading this nonsense. And it was so awful that even Newsmax cut away from it. But I wanted to give you a quick snippet of what that press conference looked like. We are here to expose the truth, to ask key questions about what happened on January 6th, who animated the violence, the extent to which the federal government may have been involved. We know this, January 6th last year wasn't an insurrection, but it very well may have been a fed surrection. This is the very last thing that happens before the breach. You've got Ray Epps whispering into this guy's ear, and it's lit. this is the moment of breach. You know, if you were the January 6th committee, wouldn't you want to know what Ray Epps whispered into that individual's ear? Yeah, I'd like to know, uh, but what does that have to do with your weird conspiracy theory that it was the feds who did this? Yeah, I don't know. I mean. They, first of all, they again, they have to have a defense. This is what Tucker Carlson has presented to them.
Their movement is now led by effectively Alex Jones with a slightly higher budget and a few less pulled pork stains on his shirt. That's it. It's just a conspiracy theorist cult. That's all it is. And they've decided that, okay, saying that it's Antifa, that seems really crazy because all these people are locked up and they were clearly there and they're clearly conservative. So something else has to absolve them of it. Uh, to be very clear, the theory that they've concocted that the FBI inspired this does not in any way absolve the individuals who participate in a riot. As you're trying to beat the life out of a cop, it doesn't matter if 30 minutes ago an FBI agent was near you. That's irrelevant, you're trying to murder someone. Um, it doesn't absolve any of the political leaders who told them to go there, who spoke to them that morning. It certainly doesn't absolve any of the members of Congress or the Senate who tried to overturn the election even after all of that violence. It would be interesting, but not absolving in any way. It also isn't true and the evidence isn't there. But even if it were, it wouldn't prove anything like what they think it would. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.